In the book of 2 Samuel, the fourth chapter, the fourth verse, we are introduced to the story, a very sad story, that went in a way unplanned. The Bible says, And it came to pass, as she made haste to flee, that he fell and became lame, and his name was Mephi Boshet. Any person who has lived long enough in life would have come to terms with the fact that all men make mistakes. It is not the mistakes that you make that is the problem, for it is those mistakes and errors that proves our humanity. All men make mistakes. All men err and have made mistakes at one point in their life or the other. Mistakes in action or in words or just in an assumption, in thought. We've seen great prophets make mistakes that could have cost an entire kingdom its king, that could have cost eternity its king. I'm speaking of the story of the anointing of King David. The Bible says the most accurate prophet of his time, who the Bible says none of his words ever fell to the ground. When he prophesied, he prophesied accurately. On a certain day, he had the opportunity to go anoint a new king of Israel. And when he saw the elder brothers of David, he was sure that the king was amongst one of them. He thought it was Eliab. And the Bible says he was ready to go anoint him until God stopped him and said, No, prophet, that's not the person. The one that I've called as king isn't even there. And that's what happens with us. Sometimes we make mistakes in the friends we choose, mistakes in those we go into relationship with, mistakes at the place of work, mistakes and misjudgment of people and their character. Sometimes we even make mistakes in not believing in ourselves enough. Mistakes are normal, but it's the effect of these mistakes that scares most of us. Because sometimes there are mistakes that a person can make that, could, that its effect could last a long time. Like in this story, the woman was trying to run when she heard that the king and his son had died. And she, the only son of Jonathan remaining, Mephibosheth, she tried to take him to escape, to avoid the child being kidnapped or killed. In the process of running away from problem, she unintentionally dropped the child. And there, right there, was another problem. And the child became lame, and his name was called Mephibosheth. How do you live with pain of a mistake? How do you live knowing that your mistake has cost someone else something tangible. That's why the word of God is coming to you today. What you can do something about, you want to do. Or what you can't do anything about, you must learn to live with and to let go. Mephibosheth, no doubt, was lame. And I'm sure that woman felt so bad because she had good intentions. And sometimes you have good intentions. But things still turn out mistakenly you must learn to make peace with your heart learn to forgive yourself identify with being human learn to be at peace that you're not perfect learn to forgive yourself and let things go things happened that has happened if it's happened already and it's in the past let it go learn from the mystics it is amazing that god would not stop his people from making mistakes because he has given them the ability to make choices but what god would have you do is to learn from the mystics learn from your mystics the bible says in the book of romans that these things we are written for an example unto us everything including the mistakes of the fathers have you noticed how that god does not hide the mistakes of his servant the things that we obviously today would know as erroneous that if we were going to write books today and we had the opportunity to tell the stories, we would clean out and delete certain parts. Every parent loved to cover their children and, you know, paint their children as being all perfect and all, you know, excellent without errors and flaws. Every person likes to sell the best sides of themselves. This is why people stay and sit and edit out certain parts of their photos and pictures and cut out and crop out certain parts because no one wants to see any flaws or flops in their parts or in their bodies. But when you look at the story of the patriarchs of faith, all the way from Noah and all that he did, 
you see that these men were real men. And the reason God left it there was to show us that actually it is not perfect people he seeks. It is real people. And that is what making mistakes mean. It means you're a real person. It means you are learning in this life. You are learning in this life that we only live forward. You are learning from your own experiences. You don't have a previous ability to know what is going to happen. But when it does happen, if it ever happens, you learn from it. But a better way also that you can learn is by learning from the mistakes of others. That's why the word of God is written. That's why the Bible tells us about the drinking of Noah after a good time and the consequences when he got drunk. That's why the Bible tells us of Abraham's yielding to pressure and as a result of the pressure, getting into an adulterous relationship and the consequences of that action. That's why the Bible tells us of the lies of Isaac and the consequences of that action and how we can avoid a repeat of what almost happened when he almost lost his wife. That's why the Bible goes on and on and on to tell us about the stories of men like Moses and all their errors and their mistakes. And God does not shy away from it. That's why the Bible is detailed about the mistakes of King David and how David himself learned from his errors and from his mistakes. That's why the Bible tells us about the, the apostles and paints them as real men who lived with mistakes and they were okay. They were able to pick themselves up because they identify themselves as humans, as men. What does God want you to do? He wants you to know that he loves you just the way you are. Have you made a mistake? Have you made an error? Are you still living in the anguish and in the torment of having made a mistake at all? There is no need for that. God wants you to forgive yourself, to forget the incidents that happened, to let go, to truly repent, and to learn from the lessons, to learn the lessons from the occurrence of that event, and to make sure that it doesn't repeat itself, at least not in the same way again. You don't want to intentionally live a life of mistakes. It will cost you time. It will cost you relationships. Because when you intentionally make mistakes, it affects some other person. It affects some other system. It can affect the whole world. Can you imagine what would have happened if King David was not anointed? If the prophet Samuel had anointed Eliab? Can you imagine King David being blotted out of the history books? Everything we know today was tied to King David. Even Jesus Christ comes from his lineage. But at some point, he was almost missed. He was almost, almost, almost missed from being anointed. Then the prophet scolded himself and started getting into depression because of his mistakes. No, he went on and he corrected his mistake. He went on and anointed the right person. It's time for you to go on and anoint the better part of your life, which is still in front of you. Let go of the past. Let go of your mistakes. Let go of your errors. Identify with God and the second chance which he gives. The Lord bless you.